Today I will not talk about spatial design, but one of the faders on the mixing desk, which is openness. And on one end of the fader you have transparency, and the other end of the fader you have secrecy. Transparent is when something is see-through. So a window, for instance, is transparent, you can see through it. If it's 100% transparent, everyone can see everything. And secrecy, on the other hand, is when something is secret. So in LARP, this basically means how much do the players know when they are playing the LARP or beforehand. We are dividing it up into pre-game transparency, what the players know before the game, and in an off-game transparency, what the players know during the game. Pre-game pre transparency will be where is the game held? What is it about? Who is organizing? Who is playing the LARP? Um, how will we play it? And how much, how many days, how much pressure will we be on during the game? All of these things. So these are is basically practical questions. Normally the players will know all of these things. Not every time it's possible. I know that uh, the game that was just presented, 1943, held in Belarus, I heard that it was not actually possible for them to tell the players where the game was held because they were afraid that the local authorities would come and shut down the LARP. So the players had to be taken out to one location and from there driven to another location that was secret. The in and off game transparency is both what do you as a player know, what do your character know. This is not necessarily the same. You can, uh, the characters can have secrets and maybe all the players know all of the character secrets off game. So you as a player can use this information to steer the play in the right direction in game. But sometimes you want the players to not be aware of what secrets the other characters have. In Snaphane, for instance, that some of you played yesterday and the rest of you will play uh, today or tomorrow. The characters have secrets that you as players do not know, so you will feel uh, the insecurity as players as well. In New Voices in Art that you played Tuesday, you have the tapping on the glass meta technique. So you as a player can tap someone on the glass and you will know what that character is feeling really and not what they are just saying they are feeling. That doesn't mean your character knows this, but you as a player can use this information to steer the uh, play in the direction you want it. And when our destinies meet, which you will be playing later on today, you will actually, as players, co-create the characters so you will all know everything there is to know about the characters. Remember what Eirik uh, said earlier this week, that um, if the characters have secrets, and these secrets are not revealed, they're not actually existing in the lab. So if you play, or if you create secrets, make sure that they are some kind of uh, figured out uh, during the game. Then there are secrets that you, that you as organizers can have from your players. So if you have transparent labs, your players will, in the extreme, know everything. This is really difficult basically, because the more information you have, the more will get lost in the communication to the players. But if we, for instance, are 10 friends organizing a lab together, and we are playing it as well, and we've all been equally uh, in creating the lab, we will know everything there is to know, and that will be very transparent. Um, sometimes you'll ask yourself, why is this interesting? Why do I want to know the end of the lab? Romeo and Juliet, for example, Everybody knows that Juliet and Romeo dies at the end, but still people keep going to the play, they watch the movie and they still read the play. Because we really like the story. We like how the story is told, how we experience it. So transparent labs are very much about storytelling and creating stories together and we enjoy that. Um, this also means that if the players know a lot about the lab, and what is going to happen and what they have to play with. They will be able to create this experience together um, and they will take a lot of ownership. You will get a lot of help from the players. 
The danger is that maybe it's going to get boring because Romeo and Juliet, I will, I will enjoy the story even though I know they will die in the end. But if I go to Scream 4 and I already know who the killer is, it's not that much exciting to watch a horror movie. Which takes us to the secret labs. The secret extreme is that the players will know nothing. Not even where the lab is held, when it is. <laughs> Maybe they don't know who the organizers are. This is also really difficult in practice. It has been, uh, it has been made. It's usually a really bad idea, because if people do not know they're actually playing, they're, they're going to end up really paranoid, maybe. <laughs> but normal secret labs would be like horror movies. You go in because you want to get scared, because you don't know when the murder is going to come or what is actually living in the basement. And that, that gives you chills and it's exciting. So when you have secret labs, you get true surprise, you get excitement, you get wonder. If you go to a detective lab, for instance, we're playing detectives and we all want to know who actually killed the chef in the library and with what. We want to find out clues so that we can solve this mystery. That will be a different experience if we already know as players who killed the chef and it, they did it with a chandelier. But this type of games requires a lot of game mastering because the less you tell your players, the less they can take uh, responsibility for their own experience. So they are much more dependent on US game masters applying what they need for the game. The risk of secret labs is that the players might get disappointed and they might get angry because there are two ways that this can go very wrong. If you keep secrets from your players, you might, they might expect something completely different than what they're actually getting, which is uh, expectations. So if I join a LARP and I think I'm going to play a medieval soldier and I really want this experience of being poor and, and going to war for the church and this is just how I do, I'm not, I'm not rich enough to get a wife, I just want this muddy hardcore feeling and I've bought, like, I spent a lot of money on armor and costume and then suddenly zombies come out of the woods and I'm running through the underwoods chased by zombies. That is not what I, what I came in to do. So that will most likely make the players get really angry and really disappointed because that's not what they bought the ticket for. The other way it can go really wrong is when you put your players in uncomfortable situations that they did not uh, ask for or were not prepared for. This brings us back again to Johanna's uh, talk about player safety. Because if you, for instance, ask your players to come in and play a nice, lovely family dinner, and what they do not know is that soldiers will come in, take them out and torture them for three hours, that will be very uh, unfortunate, <laughs> let's say that. <laughs> and you will most likely get players who are angry, hurt, and will never ever trust you as organizers again. So that is normally a bad idea, but it doesn't have to be this bad to, to get wrong. You can have, Johanna also talked about the bleed fader. You can have the bleed in, which is close to home, and bleed out, which is far from home. But, and I, sometimes it, it's cool to play close to home, but if, I'm not, if I don't know I'm doing it, and you don't know as organizers, you cannot always know that I, th this is close to home for me. So if I, for instance, play that I'm in a relationship with a guy, and I don't know also as a player that this guy is having an affair with my best friend. This could be like, this is classic romantic drama. But if I, as a player, just broke up with my boyfriend because I found out that he had a, an affair with my best friend, this will put me in a situation where I will get too close to home, I will have unwanted bleed, and most likely I will want to take myself out of the lab and not go in again. And you don't want this as organizers. So when you are keeping secrets from your players, always ask yourself, why is this a secret? Is it because we want true emotional response? Is it because we want it to be exciting? Or is this something that we can tell our players and that will make it easier for them to play on? And it will not, um, it, will, it will create a better experience for them. 
So if you put the fader to maximum, you have the transparency. Um, you will have the co-creation, both pre-game and during the game. We have the players being able to take responsibility of their own, uh, ex uh, of their own experience. And they will be part of creating this vision that you created. Um, it will be easier for them to know what they're doing. And you will definitely be meeting their expectations. Um, uh, because you already know what they're going to get and you're not going to give them any surprises. There is, a diff there is a danger that they might get information overload. Like uh, you heard that Charles at the moment is writing 150 characters for a fair with a matter. If you, you, can ask, you can put these online, you can put them for all of your players to read and hope for complete transparency. That does not mean your players will read 150 characters. Maybe one will. I know that one did at Hamlet when uh, Johanna and Bjarke did. That was only one in two runs, and I did definitely not read all the characters. Um, there is also the danger with full trans transparency that you will not have any real surprises because you will already know what's going on. If you put the fader to minimum, you will have secrecy. That means you will have true emotional responses because your players will actually get surprised when they are put in situations. You will have the investigation and wonder. It will be exciting to figure out what is actually going on. You will have uh, more control as a designer because when you put the transparency out there, the players will co-create and they will influence your vision or your idea. And when you, the more you keep secret, the more you control it, basically. But that means that you can have misunderstandings in expectations and um, you will have the risk of unwanted bleed. So you have to be extra careful with being aware of player safety and opt in and opt out and safety words if you keep secrets. I might have a little more time so I can tell you um, about one of, I, I did, uh, I went to a lot where I played a soldier and we, we, all, we play a lot of labs where we are soldiers, but this was, um, this was an analogy of the Iraq war. So I played an FN soldier kind of culture, and I went to this local country where it was, uh, the culture was inspired by, by, uh, by uh, Iraqi culture, but it was not completely translated. Um, a lot of the culture was organizer, so both of the cultures were created so they would have most possibly culture clashes every time there will be a, a conflict every time we meet. But a lot of the culture was also uh, player created so the details was created by the players who played the local culture. And it was possible for me to kind of cheat and figure out a lot of the culture or the local culture. But the reason that I went to the lab was that I actually wanted to feel this culture clash. I wanted to feel how our soldiers, when they go to Iraq or Afghanistan, get in situations where they don't know what to do or how to do it the best way. So whenever I heard my friends talking about this or saw texts, I closed my eyes and my ears because I wanted this to be a secret. So when I got down there, the smallest thing was a conflict for me. I was asked into someone's home and I did not know how to enter. Do I leave my stuff here? I can't really leave my gun, but it's really, it's not very nice to put a gun or take a gun into someone's home. Do I take off my shoes? I don't know that. They asked me, they gave me a bread and said, break the bread. And I was like, shit. <laughs> do I break it in the middle? <laughs> do I take off a little piece? How do I do this? Because I was actually asked for dinner and I really wanted to try to be the nice soldier who wanted to do it the best possible way. But the not knowing how to do it, the fact that I tried to give them food, but they did not want it, and I, don't, I didn't know how, why they didn't want the food, because they were starving. I tried to give them medical aid, and they refused, and they spit me in the face, and I couldn't understand why they wanted to be sick. That put me in situations where I felt the real frustration, and anger, and hurtfulness that made me do my job worse, even though I was always trying to do it the best possible way. So because I was really careful with not knowing about the local culture, I got everything I wanted and more from my play experience. So sometimes secrecy is also a small thing said that and that could be really powerful as well. Thank you. <laughs>